Now let's talk about transformation policies. And in this lecture, we are going to go ahead and add a sample API from Microsoft to help us to go ahead in this lecture. And I'm going to put a link to the sample API in the resources of this lecture. Now let's go ahead and add an API, select Open API, and let's put Conference API URL that you will find in the resources of this lecture. And let's go ahead and create this API. As you can see, the API has been created and it has different operations in it. Now let's see one of these operations, let's say get sessions, and let's go ahead and test it. As you can see here, 200 OK, the request has been successful. Now I want you to pay attention to these two lines because they are really dangerous. So these two headers tells what platform we are using for the backend service and what's the version of that platform. And it's not a good idea to have this confidential information in the HTTP response of our APIs. Basically, we are telling everybody what systems we are using and what the version of it, and if they want to attack our system or bring it down, they will have a good baseline to start their attack against us. Now let's see how can we use transformation policy to make this more secure. So let's go to get sessions, add policy, and select set headers. Now I'm going to open a new tab. So we can copy over the header names from the response. Let's select conference API, get sessions, and send a test request. Now let's go ahead and copy xasp.net version and put it in the header name here and leave the value empty and make the action delete. And let's go ahead and add another header for x powered by and again, putting the action delete as well. Now let's go ahead and save our changes. As you can see here, we cannot have a value specified for delete action. And if you check here, probably we have got an empty string in here. So let's save our changes. Okay. Now let's test get sessions operation one more time. And as you can see, we are still able to see these two headers. So let's go back and see what might be wrong. And probably you have noticed it already. We have put these headers in the inbound processing. And of course, it's not gonna be applied for the HTTP response. And to fix this, we need to put these two policies in the outbound policies of our operation. Let's go ahead and save this change. Now let's test our operation one more time. And as you can see here, we are not able to see these headers anymore. So it's really important that you are putting your policy in the right place from the get-go to make sure that they are applied in the direction you wanted them to be applied. Now let's go to have one more look at our HTTP response. And you may have noticed that the URL for conference API is already included in our response and we don't want to have this URL in our response, of course. Now let's get back to policy and see what we can do to protect this. Let's go ahead and add mask URL in content. This is wrong format, so probably I need to get back to the documentation and I'm going to put a link for this page in the resources of this lecture. Let's select mask URLs in content and let's copy this line. And make sure you are putting it in the outbound policies. And let's go ahead and save our changes. Now let's test to get sessions operation one more time. And I want you to notice here the URL difference. This one starts with conference API and the new one should be starting with our API name and mask, the real URL for the backend function that we are using. As you can see here, what's included in the response is the URL through our API management, not the URL of the backend service that we are using. This is to make sure that the backend services are well protected. Now, let's go back and clean this up and see what other transformation policies that we might have. Let's clean this up and save our changes. Now, and these are the other transformation policies that we can use. We have already seen set HTTP header and all of the other setters are exactly the same logic. 
However, the syntax might be different a little bit. Where you get to set either the backend service or a status code or a request method. Also, you can convert JSON HTTP request to response to XML and the other way around. Also, you can replace a substring in the body of your request or response and you can rewrite the URL in different formats. And I'm going to put a link for this page in the resources of this lecture so you can follow along and find some examples of the different kind of policies. However, we have gone through the hard ones and you now should be familiar how you can write policies for your API management. That's it for this lecture. I hope you enjoyed it and please feel free to join me in the next lecture.